Hey, and welcome to Artists of Tomorrow with your boy Unjustified World with my brother and co host. Hey, man's Young De Niro. Young De Niro and his bitch came and shut shit down. Today, we're going to be talking about the legend, the myth who's influenced music over the last 10 years to everyone who listen to the Yeats, the fucking Uzis, the Drakes. You know who we're talking about? Of course, the one and only the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Wiz. Wiz. Come, Leafa. If social media hadn't happened at the same time, I don't think I would have the same career. I would still be dope, though. <laughs> I'd have figured out a way to do something. Wiz always had a tremendous vision for what he was doing. Right. We gotta take you all the way back. I'm talking about to make you really understand about how we're gonna describe how he really has influenced the music of today, right? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We gotta take it way back to the first mixtape, before the deal, before the projects, before the noise, before Black and Yellow. All right. So on this journey, Wiz Khalifa, Mr. Jabril Thomas Cameron, was born September the eighth, nineteen eighty-seven, in North Dakota, beginning his music career in high school. He was born in a military family, so most of the time he spent either working on music, saving up money so he can get in the studio, because he found out that he had the creative art of writing. He was painting something very specific, and he knew where he wanted all the colors to be. I've just always sort of looked at that in awe. His first and debut project mixtape that ever came out was Prince of the City. Mm. A lot of his true core fans have never heard Prince of the City, but if you're a real fan, you know because you were there you know. at the start of this journey. That project gave him local success to move on and gave them the drive to really take the next step in becoming an entrepreneur and signing his first deal at 18 years old. People only dream about that back then. People only dream about that. But the craziest thing was, when he was signed, he was dropped after his first deal because his first buzzing song that he dropped, they only signed him for that song and they didn't believe into the rest of his project and what he was working on. Very early on, we got a dose of some realities about the music industry. It's say yeah, it's say yeah, it's say yeah. One night I was like 19, I had just graduated from high school and I made a song called Say Yeah. It was over to um, I was DJ. And that shit took off. What's up, bitch? Yeah, we are in LA. Like I told y'all, fool, you told me. It was weird because I just had a song. So it was like, they signed me just because of that one record. His posters were around the city. He would be in local publications. He would be on TV. And it was just crazy. I just couldn't believe it was happening to us. When he finally got the first deal, it felt like, oh, this is going to be it. Like, this is, you know, we're just going to go from here to the moon, straight shot. We worked the record, and it did what it did, but it didn't go crazy. And there wasn't like a huge demand for my album and shit. So it was like, they was like, all right, fuck you. Like, you know what I mean, basically. And my record deal was up. So Wiz Khalifa was back like a regular artist, down bad. Do you think my man gave up? Hell no. Hell no. I mean, it was obviously like a bit of a disappointment for us all. You know, we hoped for more, but rather than feeling dejected that like he you know lost a record deal i think it really lit this fire under him i've never seen you know it being the end or me being like oh i don't want to rap anymore i'm not gonna make it in this industry i seen that as like an opportunity to just do things my way it was really just like i am gonna make this happen no matter what deal or no deal whether we were at the label or not, you know, I know we have some buzz and people want to see him. So it was like, let's just continue the momentum from Say Yeah and go on tour. We just literally hopped in a car, just drove all over the country. All right, y'all, we are on the way to Tallahassee. We're still in Michigan. I'll see y'all in New York. Baby! All right, Wiz Khalifa went on to drop his first debut mixtape, Kush and Orange Juice. Mm. Bro, 
that changed the whole pivotal part of the game. In 2010, the people who were running the game was 50 Cent. The hottest album of the year was My Dark Twisted Fantasy by Kanye West. Who else was out at this time? Drake was out, you know. So Far Gone. So Far Gone, it just came out. Yes. Wiz Khalifa was just paying his Cuddy. way in a... Yes. Kid fucking... Man on the Moon, it just dropped, I think. Yes. So most of the time, the artist that was running the game was either you had to be a hood nigga, you had to be a gangster, you had to be coming from the streets. You necessarily couldn't just be talking about having fun in the music. You had to be like saying something, you know what I mean? Yeah, or you had to be super lyrical. Super lyrical, like why, why do you have to be so lyrical, lyrical? <laughs> nah. And then one day he was just like, yo, there's this thing called Twitter. Starting today, right now, you can follow me on Twitter on my MySpace. If you don't have Twitter, get it now, and you could follow me. And he was like, yo, you could write how you feel on the internet or post pictures, and everybody would see it. Like, no matter, you don't even have to know the people. We're fucking baked, man. <laughs> We're about to go to the show. I know, like, that was him doing that shit back then. Like, he would get, like, a uh, little flip camera, and you just fucking hold it, record what he was doing for a little bit of time. Like, he would sit there, edit. He'd be like, this shit's gonna be big. This shit's gonna be big. I just be like, okay. I do not believe you. Social media was becoming the thing, and he jumped right in. Look at this shit, man. This nigga got a box of six biscuits in him, dog, and he's gonna eat them individually like cookies. Cup holder in there. Oh my God. He put a whole biscuit in your mouth? <laughs> Fuck! If he didn't do that, I don't think that the fan base would be as crazy as it is, because that's what brought people into our world. Yeah, that was just a time where everything has shifted to be able to use social media as a platform to promote your music and like build a fan base. And um, first that project, was Cushion Orange Juice, brought him to a different state because a lot of fucking his hottest songs were on that. Like I'm on my level. Hey, I'm on my level. What, what, what was your reaction when that project was out? Well, snap. When Rolling Papers dropped, I ain't gonna lie. That was like one of the best times of my life. Did oh as. Yeah, I can respect that. I'm not even gonna lie, because same too. That time period of just being young and not giving a fuck. fuck. <laughs> yeah, bro, not giving you just turning up, just going back, playing when I'm gone. Yes, yes. Ink of my old, like all that. Yes, and you also gotta realize, the way he's even influenced some of the artists today is a lot of the artists today, they love having their hair dyed. He's the first rapper ever in the history to, in the industry to have his hair dyed as his main haircut 24 seven. Like before you had the juice Soul patch swirls. Key. Yes, bro. Before you had the juice swirls and the Uzis and everyone has their trippy red. Right now, it's your fault. You're not number one, it's your fault. <laughs> From that tour, I was able to restart my career. So that was the moment for sure that sparked everything. He was the first person to do it. How do you think he changed the direction of music? Mm, to be honest, I think it's gotten a little bit more trap. Okay. A little bit more trap nowadays with Wiz albums, but still, there's always that feel good vibe in there. No, nah, that's 100% true. That's 100% true. And it's definitely some stoner music. Oh, 100%. Hundred percent. So, 2010, he dropped his first project, which really gave him his notoriety. By 2011, when he dropped Black and Yellow, that was bringing this man into a whole different atmosphere. And a whole different I know where I'm at tonight. We in Pittsburgh, right? I don't know if they're ready for this one yet. Shit, I don't know if I'm ready for this one. Black and Yellow yes. was dropped in a period where Pittsburgh just won the Super Bowl. Did a lot of things that Coming artists that do song, when they're on the grind and when they're trying to make like a name for themselves. And just hype, through that, hype, I had built like a hype, crazy ass problem. fan base. Anything that they've ever been on the top of the Black and Yellow, I already knew the game and how to like move around and make my way. Black and Yellow is what made it really, really real for me and I think for all of us. Especially when they won, and it's the song that's being played while everyone's dancing around holding up the trophy. <laughs> We're from Philly. We felt all of that all the way from here. <laughs> yes, yes. Everyone remixed that song. Snoop Dogg, Lil Wayne. 
Green and yellow. Your, your grandma, your grandma, grandma, your grandma's uh-huh. dead grandma. Your uncle, your nigga. <laughs> Everyone influenced that. Oh my God. By 2012, Wiz Khalifa was a no name in hip hop households. And he was actually more of a cult following because of how much people loved his music. By 2012, Wiz Khalifa decided to take his brand and construct Taylor Gang. What TGOD. Yes, TGOD. What was your view of that when that came out? See, Taylor Gang was more than an album. It yes. was a movement. Yes. It was really Wiz's own cult following. Yes. Equivalent to what? What would it equivalent to today? Nowadays, I guess you could... I mean, I guess some of them get too hype, but you, I mean, you could go with Playboy Cardi fans, yes, or you could even call yes. them... Similar yes. to Beyonce, Beehive fans. Yeah, they yes, deep. bro. Yes, even them followings get deep. Yes, you can go with Nicki Minaj, Barb. You can hell with Juice World and X's. Fa- yes, there was a cult following like that. People literally wore what he wore because he wore Chuck Taylor sales went up. <laughs> because this man himself. Everybody wanted to die to hear. Everybody the wanted patch. to wear Chucks because he was wearing it. <laughs> By 2012, Wiz Khalifa was a household name and are not no longer an emerging artist. He was in every single record store. Ah, it is crazy that Wiz Khalifa today has grown to become the artist as he became. From the tattoos, to the hair, to the party, to the lifestyle. Like he, we can even say a and lot he filmed of artists it all. today, what they glorify in music today? Drugs. Drugs. Sip and lean, scissor, bubble, quiche, walk, trish. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can do this shit all day. I'm done. Yes, he was the first rapper to take glorifying weed, which even Snoop Dogg has already done, but he made it fun. He made it for the next generation to make their drugs even more fun. Yeah, he you did. Know what I'm saying? Which was our Snoop. Which is our Snoop. Which is our Snoop. So, back to the art of just giving this man his flowers. Guys, I want you guys to stop for a second, subscribe, like this video. There's so much more to come. But we have to give Wiz Khalifa his flowers. It's your boy on Justify World with my boy. Young Nero, you already know who it is. <laughs> Does he know who it is? <laughs> oh, man. And guys, get right. We have so much more episodes coming. We just wanted to stop and show love to Wiz Khalifa today. Artists of tomorrow. Much love. Much respect, man. Much love. You know what to do. Click that big red button. Leave a comment down below. Let us know how we did. Let us know anything we missed.